Hey guys, I turn in here. Uh, this is a recording of my first ever attempt playing Unconnected Marketeers on hard mode. Uh, I've been playing normal to, you know, unlock stuff and get the endings and stuff just without much trouble. And I figured, you know, I've been having a really easy time of it uh, at this point, especially with a set of good cards. So I figured I'd give you know, I figured I'd give Heart a try, and uh, I hadn't used Marisa or Sakuya yet, so I tried Marisa, and uh, oh boy, now do it with Marisa is back in full swing in this game. Uh, Marisa's range is so bad uh, that even though I kind of knew vaguely what to expect from playing normal a half dozen times at this point, um, Marisa definitely complicated things. Uh, my most recent normal attempt, I had 2.02 power here, and here I only have 1.7. Uh, as for what cards I brought, uh, I brought Yamawara Shopping Technique, because I found that to just be a really, really useful card that I would always pick up in Stage 2. So why not pick it up earlier and just alt have it for the entire game, and you know, just have cheaper card picks. It would also give me more money for anything that used money. Uh, I also brought Sanyo's Dragon Pipe, uh, bomb to pick up the resource pieces here, um, which the Dragon Pipe gives you an, a life piece every time you capture a spell card. I think this is honestly one of the strongest cards in the entire game. So kind of a no brainer to guarantee that. And especially in the early game where the spell cards are easier. Uh, I also brought Money is the Best Lawyer in Hell, which had been uh, keeping me from losing Centipede in Normal, but I didn't think I'd be able to keep the Centipede at full power in a Hard Mode, or even like keep it up at all, especially going into Hard Blind. So uh, I didn't bring that, but I did keep Money is the Best Lawyer in Hell. And this was a mistake, it only comes into play once, uh, and honestly it was probably better if it didn't come into play at all. Like, I genuinely would have would have been better off with nothing instead of that card. Uh, it's very much a win more card. Uh, anyway, um, Mikkei's non-spells are actually a huge step up on hard, which is really surprising to me. Like, I wasn't expecting quite that much of a difference. Uh, however, the actual patterns are here. Like, it's still stage one. Uh, it's really nothing too threatening here. Like, honestly, the most dangerous thing was trying to make sure I deal damage with Marisa's just so narrow range. Like, it's so narrow. I honestly uh, knew at this point that I really wanted a card that would give me a little more damage output or a little more flexibility. And Mika was selling... Remu's homing, which I could only get because I had Yamawara shopping technique. Uh, and that homing, uh, I don't know how much that homing helped me throughout this run, because I don't really have a control for Marisa, but it certainly felt useful. I kind of wish there were uh, damage values, so I know exactly how much damage everything is doing. Maybe I'll try and look that up at some point. But that, that extra homing shot, just it, it felt really nice to have. And it meant that even on boss fights where I'm getting pushed around, I'm still getting at least a little bit of damage. Uh, didn't quite take out both fairies there. But I think the other one drops another uh, Nazarene card, which is worth 50 more money. Or funds, as I guess what the UI is. Uh, uh, my first playthrough of normal, uh, I got a little beat up by stage two. It's just very, very hard to predict a lot of the patterns here. Uh, because I, this time I know what kind of patterns to expect. Uh, even though they're now buffed versions, it's just buffed versions of stuff I already know. So I think here I, yeah, I, I needed to try to stream turn earlier and I didn't, uh, but this bomb just gives me back two thirds of a bomb. So 
considering the combination of being in a bad situation and getting most of it back that I probably wouldn't get without it, it's pretty good. Uh, I actually like the stage 2 boss theme quite a bit. It's got a, it's got a nice beat to it. It's no dark side of fate, but you know, very few songs are. Uh, this is probably, I'd say, my second favorite stage 2 boss theme. I don't know. Uh, Death to all but the song is pretty good, too. Oh, and Dullahan Under the Willows. Wow, I just listed off the stage 2 boss themes for my three favorite soundtracks, so... <laughs> uh. Yeah, that's the one place where uh, money is the best lawyer in hell comes into play. And I remember saying, oh, that's a really bad hit uh, to that hit. I recognized I was in a bad spot, but I thought I could get away with it. Uh, but I was incorrect. Uh, that's a really bad hit because it cost me 200 gold or 200 funds before I was going to buy a card. It would have been would have been much better if I didn't get hit there or if I got hit sooner because then I would have more funds at the end of this. Uh, least skill green cyclone. This is one of those patterns I don't really understand. Uh, I think I eventually bomb it in this run because it's just so wild. Or maybe I get sniped. Oh, I, yeah, I get sniped. <laughs> I got a little greedy and get sniped. Yeah. Uh, I kept this run going, though, because it's like I, I really didn't want to reset. And... Uh, I figured I was, I'll still probably be able to clear this. It's, it, it's the, wor the worst that happens is I end up getting Maurice's bad ending, which is also an achievement. So uh, I, I used power here to buy a card. Uh, I remember I had a couple of really good choices, and if I had more money, I probably would have picked something better. But I ended up taking the wolf because I was at low power a lot. Or I, I was expecting to be at lower power a lot more. And the wolf says it gives you more damage at low power. So uh, the drawback of buying with power instead of funds is kind of mitigated a little bit. Uh, I later found out that the wolf gives you just a flat 40% damage boost. And that's actually huge. So wolf was absolutely a clutch pick. Uh, probably carried a lot of this run in the end game, honestly. Uh, and I didn't even realize that it was likely to. So compared to normal, I find it a lot harder, or I found it a lot harder to get uh, power and funds during stage portions here. So Sanya's non spells are still really hard. Uh, though honestly, I don't think the hard mode version of this is any like it didn't feel any different than normal you just kind of get stuff that splits up up close to you uh, yeah uh, also from what i said at the beginning of, this, uh, of the run with uh, money is the best lawyer in hell. Uh, that card never comes into play again. So I, I really should have brought something else. Like even bringing a life would have been better than that. And I would, you know, I, I'd have more funds. Uh, trying to think of what else would be a really good choice. Because I'm still trying to refine my ability card strategy. Uh, in terms of actives, the one I, I've enjoyed the most has been... Uh, Raiko's drum, which just lets you effectively flash bomb. And I, I was pretty safe there, but I was a little panicked, so I, I figured I'd spend my last bomb. So I arrived at Sanyo. Four lies, no bombs, which is not not really what you want, but it's fine. Yeah, the non-spells really do kind of want to push you to the side. And Marisa absolutely does not want to get pushed to the side. I'd say I did a pretty good job with this. 
Do I get hit here? No, I do have a last second twitch dodge and avoid getting hit. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, here... Okay, I did... When I was playing, I didn't see the bullet that hit me, but yeah, there, there was a bullet that pretty cleanly hit me there. Yeah, I didn't see a way through, and these non-spells are still rough. Uh, I'm sure they're not too bad with a little bit of practice, but I don't have that little bit of practice, especially at the higher speeds. So this card felt pretty safe, just because you can usually stay centered. But I, I actually got pushed pretty far to the side. But uh, this is one where Marisa manages to get the job done. Like, the rate of range of fire might be very narrow, but narrow's enough there. Uh, and then this non-spell also didn't really feel different between normal and hard. Uh, I mean, you just kind of find the gap, go through it, and you're fine. It feels loosely aimed, whether it is or not. Uh, and then, I tried to misdirect, I was too late, I recognized it. The lasers fired way longer than I expected. I'm thinking, I'm not capturing this with Marisa. I'm bombing the moment I get myself in a dangerous situation. Uh, which ends up being right about here. And I actually probably could have captured it, but I wasn't really able to keep track of how much damage I was doing, how much more was left, if I was going to have to stream turn again. So I just dropped the Master Spark to get the job done. Uh, I ended up buying Mamizo's card, which is just the uh, helpful Tanuki. Uh, this makes it so that I can never go below 3 power, which kind of protects me against um, like chain deaths, which can always happen. Uh, because the penalty for dying is so high in this game, uh, in terms of lost power, because there are ways to get it back. So I elected to go for that. Uh, I think it was a pretty good choice uh, in the context of this run, though not the most powerful card. Uh, it was by far the best option of what I had available, though. I remember that much. I think I go for the kill here, and I don't get it. No, I do get it. Uh, this section is absolutely insane. <laughs> Uh, if you don't kill things quickly, and Marisa just can't do that, so uh, I dropped the bomb to both pick up all of the funds and definitely stay alive, which I then realized gives me no bombs for mid-boss orb. Which, this is one of the weirdest sections of any stage I think I've ever seen in an official Toho game. Uh, I end up doing a lot of corner dodging, just because for, from normal I found that the bottom right corner is a, a reasonably safe place, but this is still a very tense pattern that takes a lot of a lot of focus and paying attention to where the bullets are going to see where the gaps are going to be. And I barely get away with two dodges in the very corner. Oh, there is actually a benefit to killing these spirits faster. Okay. Yeah, I, I pretty much immediately die there, but I'm not terribly surprised. Uh, it was a lot denser than I was expecting, and I got myself in a bad spot. Uh, I do pretty well with that aim bullet overlap here. And then this overlap starts out this section a little scary. Uh, and that was a really late bomb. I, I know you can get rammed by the yin yangs coming in from off screen, and it is very scary what if you have to try to circle this and the structure of the stage portion almost makes it so you have to circle uh, I don't think I bomb this but it's def okay I do bomb this to guarantee the resource pieces uh, it's a choice it's a reasonable choice uh, and I end up arriving at I can never remember yin yang lady's name uh, Misumaru or something? Yeah, Misu... Tamatsukuri. Okay. No wonder I can't remember that. 
Uh, but yeah, I got here three lives, two bombs, which is a little worse than my entry to Sanyo. Uh, it, but it's like I've been holding pretty steady in terms of my resource count this run. Uh, going into this, the only thing I know is that the second spell card is already kind of a stupid gimmick card on normal difficulty. And I just don't know that I have, like, it is a memorization of timing card, and I don't have that timing. So I'm going to be bombing that. And everything else, I'm kind of just going when I feel threatened. Uh, this card was is one of the few places where I actually felt a really noticeable difference in difficulties, and that was not easy. Uh, it was a very fun card, though. Like, I, I love macro stuff, and that very much felt like a macro card. Yeah, uh, I have no idea how to do this. Maybe I'll figure it out watching the replay. No, because I bombed to delete the bullets before they even get dangerous. Yeah, okay. Like, I'm sure there's a gap in when all of that overlaps. I just don't know where it is. Uh, this non-spell is very scary. I got pretty lucky with the droplets here, and I was prepared to bomb if things got dangerous again. But they never did. And then Yin Yang Suffocation, I fully intended to try to capture and bomb if it got a little scary. And it just never did. I felt very confident the entire time. Uh, the first time I got here on normal, I died because I didn't know the hitboxes. Uh, now I do know the hitboxes, and I know that the big ones, which is what I died to, are absolutely massive hitboxes. And the little ones are still large, but pretty reasonably sized. And I end up with a no-death, one-bomb Misumaru. Or, or Tatsumaki, whatever. Uh, which, for the first time seeing that fight on hard mode, I will gladly take. I I think that'll be mostly a fun fight on Lunatech. Uh, I end up taking Keiki's Idol card, which makes it so your options can block bullets. Uh, I didn't really have a reason for this choice over anything else. It was just kind of the best the best choice from what I saw. Uh, I kind of got myself trapped there trying to POC, and I end up putting myself in a situation where I'm doing a streaming section with forward focus and no tricks, so... Uh, you'll also notice from my card selections that I have no actives. This is just... Just, like I said, I don't... I never really remember to use the actives. Uh, uh, Raiko's Drum is kind of the one I've had the most success with, and that's because it's effectively a flash bomb. Because most of the time when I want to use a bomb, it's because I've gotten myself in a, a bad situation and I know I can get out of it if I just have a, a little more time. And that buys that time. Anyway, Tsukasa shows up and uh, on normal, she absolutely destroyed me the first time. I didn't understand the pattern at all. While here, uh, now that I've done it a few times, I have an understanding of what kind of thing to go for. And even though Keiki's idol uh, does end up clearing some bullets, I don't think it saved me there. I think I would have been fine without it. Now, this section uh, gets so out of hand if you don't kill things. And because I've played with Reimu and Sanai so far, well, Reimu obviously doesn't struggle. Sanai doesn't really struggle. Marisa? Marisa just dies in the corner. Um... However, I managed to read my way out of the, the dicey situation and not be spawned on and switch from the top to the bottom at a good time and ultimately carry a really good performance going here. Um, yeah. This wave overlap is a little scary. Uh, I think I wouldn't have been hit even without KK blocking things. Go for another fairy kill, get out of the way because it doesn't happen. And then there's this macro wall section. Um, this is honestly one of my favorite kinds of section. I might have been saved there by the bullet deletion. 
Uh, because you can micro, like you can go between the walls, but you really want to try to go around as many as possible, so that you don't have to go between. It's it's a very fun combination dynamic, where there's not really one right choice of what to do, and it's whatever feels right in that moment. Uh, and aside from my one bomb at the beginning of the stage, I actually got a perfect stage portion, which I was not expecting. Uh, and then Megumu shows up. She's a fun character. Uh, her fight is a little ridiculous in a couple of ways. Uh, I don't remember how it went, but I remember it went interestingly. Ah, yes, this non-spell. I'm thinking, wait, crap, I need to deal damage. Where do I do how do I do that? Also, I usually misdirect here. I think I got saved by Keiki. Uh, I, I'm kind of just flailing, trying to get damage, deal with residual waves, make sure I have a way to go and get out of the next wave, and I get away with it. Uh, this spell, on the other hand, uh, being Marisa does me no favors. And... Oh, money is the best lawyer in hell does come into play again. Okay. But again, that's a place where I didn't really want it to come into play. Because it's co going to cost me the ability to buy a really good card at the end. Uh, my options delete some bullets. I think they maybe give me a way out. I I'm unable to take it, and... Yeah, I, I got a little bit destroyed there. Uh, this one... I, I made the dodge, but then I didn't see what to do. I didn't have enough time to see that I was safe, so I dropped the bomb. Uh, honestly, should have dropped it earlier. Uh, this spell was always free on normal, but I kind of got into a really bad spot there. Uh, yeah, and then I don't trust the laser hitboxes, so I master spark it. But at this point, uh, having Mamazo's uh, helpful Tanuki thing has absolutely come in handy. And Keiki's bullet deletions make that non-spell an absolute joke because of how patterned it is. Uh, this pattern's pretty cool. But again, it's a case where I don't really have many opportunities to deal damage. And I elect to bomb here rather than try to go for a micro dodge. And again, my lack of uh, opportunities to deal damage kind of forced me up, and I misjudged the gap and die. So now, I was in pretty good shape uh, going into Mikumu, but she's kind of systematically eliminated the majority of my resources, uh, and kept me from effectively building up much more going into Stage 6. And Stage 6 is going to be a little terrifying, just because of how much aimed stuff there is, and how much the uh, enemies just come from every angle. And I'm, I'm using Marisa, what am I supposed to do? But, it's okay. Starting resources, final stage is usually sufficient, right? In, in almost any game, that's sufficient to carry it through to the end, if you know what you're doing. The problem is, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh... Due to my lack of funds and lack of good, cheaper options, I elect to just purchase a life here. Uh, I figure that life is the thing that is most likely to get me anywhere. Uh, trying to get more money or make sure I can get, uh, cash in another money is the best lawyer in hell. Uh, just It doesn't seem worth it because that buys me one hit while buying that life for 80 it's cheaper, and it gives me three additional bombs to come with it. But that's one of the things that I ended up really liking about this game, and why I think I've kept playing it. Uh, there, there's always a decision to be made at the end of a stage. And what that, dis like, what that best decision is, is so dependent on your current situation, what's available, uh, and even what other cards you have. So I kind of get my butt kicked a bit by the start of the stage portion. Uh, and then Tsukasa comes back, because of course she does. 
And she does the exact same thing. Uh, ooh, okay, that was a little scarier than I remember it being. Yeah, okay. Uh, I Master Sparked there to make sure that I killed her to get the life piece. Um, you can think of a life piece, considering it's a third of a life, uh, as effectively being worth a bit more than a bomb. Though there's uh, two-thirds of the time, it won't actually give you anything extra. Uh, if I was going to bomb, I probably should have bombed immediately rather than waiting a cycle, but whatever. Uh, so this one fairy hangs around and kind of complicates the rainbow part. And then the, all three overlap a bit, and I... To, I make the exact right calls on where I need to be to stay alive here. Uh, only killed one of them, which is fine. Uh, and I arrive at Shimada Tenkyu. I... I can't say I like this fight very much. I really can't. Probably one of the weakest final bosses in the entire series for me, which is a bit of a shame. Um... In terms of my normal runs, the most recent one I did with uh, the Sun, I, uh, I threw away the I got the blank card, basically, to get the alternate ending. Uh, and then I proceeded to one bomb. Was it one bomb or one death? I don't remember. If, it, it was one mistake. I got everything else. Uh, and that one error, one resource expenditure was on the... Uh, was on the first spell card. So in this this one right here. Uh, however, I had an idea based on how that went wrong because what I was always trying to do was stay centered. Uh, and what I realized I could do is I could potentially try to switch sides and do this kind of strategy of just kind of alternate between two positions. This is harder, but it can potentially defer pushing me up the screen. Uh, it still does. I still don't like this card. But at least with this strategy, it's not impossible. Uh, and then once Shimada shows up, then it just feels like something out of impossible spell card. Uh, where being up high on the screen is kind of the safer strategy. And a couple of micros, and I think it dies here. No, I get way out and I'm safe. And then it dies. I think that's the first time I ever captured that fairly. second non. I still have no bombs, so I have nothing to do but try. And I get it. And then Denmaku Hoarder's Obsession. Again, there's nothing to do but try. This card doesn't seem that bad. I mean, it's kind of like Denmaku Paranoia. It's like, am I supposed to circle this? Uh, that's, that was my first instinct on normal, but here I didn't feel like that was safe. So I find a way to make my way back down, and then I read everything as it's coming, and it dies. Uh, which felt like the safe option, given the fact that I'm Marisa. So again, uh, we go into a non-spell. I go up through crossing bullets. I go up through crossing bullets again, and it dies. And I get to high-density bullet market. And I'm just thinking, what's going on here? I've now done half the fight without getting hit, and kind of erased every mistake I made prior. Now, what ends up going wrong? Do I trap myself on the side here? Yeah, I trap myself on the side here. Uh, money is the best lawyer in hell comes in again, actually. And then I die anyway, going for a little more damage. So I guess money is the best lawyer in hell bought me a little more than I remembered in this run. Still a relatively weak choice. I would have been better off with something else, but it's fine. And at this point, I have resources to burn. So I bomb the non-spell rather than risk it. Because I'm just thinking, yeah, at this point, I have the resources that I'm 100% clearing. I might as well just guarantee the clear. Uh, Rainbow Ring of People. This is one of the easiest survival cards in the entire series. I honestly don't know why it's here. You just kind of circle, and as long as you keep track of when it's going to reverse, you only have to do, like, 
seven or eight dodges in the entire duration. So... I mean, I guess it's fine, but... It's a free capture. I wonder if Lunatic's the same way or not. But at least thus far, I have never failed to capture that card. Uh, Tyrannical Bullet Dominion. I, this one's hard on normal, and I kind of figured, you know what? Uh, let's hubris this, right? Like, let's just full-on hubris go for this. And I get it. Uh, I think that's, in hindsight, that's very much thanks to the wolf passive. Kind of more than anything else. Uh, and then Asylum of Denmaku, I... This is a weird card, honestly. I don't fully understand it. Uh, or what I'm supposed to do, but... It, it works. I've tried a few different things, and nothing has really, like, clicked for the uh, later phases. The first two are not too bad. This third phase... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I just run backwards into a bullet. Because the path is clear, and then it's not. Uh, I forget. Do I, do I capture the last phase? Or do I, bomb? I bomb, right? Yeah. And I end up clearing with three lives to spare, which... I, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with that. I know a lot of this run ended up getting carried by... Uh, Sanya's pipe. But, like... I don't even feel bad about that. It just feels like a really, a really smart choice to pick that. Uh, if you're planning on trying to dodge anything, which you always should be. But yeah, that was my first clear of Unconnected Marketeers on hard difficulty. First time playing it. Uh, now do it with Marisa. Accomplished.